Hello, I'm Andrew Ealing, Director of Athletics here at Highlands, and I'm joined here with, with Brian Hennington. He's our 1995 uh, football alum and uh, currently our safety manager here at the university. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy that he could join us today. Uh, what? Tell us a little bit about what you've been doing since 95. Sure. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks for having me here. So after 95, actually, when we were here at the university, there were several athletes that worked for state forestry. So we started our career. There's probably about 10, 12 of us started our career as wildland firefighters. And since then, I moved into that role on a permanent basis uh, for several different agencies, fighting fire across the United States, specifically Western United States. And, you know, getting a lot of experience, seeing a lot of things that, you know, some were really bad, some were good. Um, and then I've been also teaching at CNM as a fire science instructor for about 16 years. Uh, I stopped doing that a couple years ago. So I've been heavily involved in the fire world, emergency response, um, incident command, that type of that type of activity. Um, prior to coming to Highlands, I worked in the movie industry as a safety advisor for um, three big films, Sicario, um, Only the Brave, and Horse Soldiers, which I think they, they actually ended up changing the name of that. So Highlands, the job was open. I needed to come back and, and look at my retirement with the state. <laughs> Just to be honest, I had a couple <laughs> years to go. So I came, the job was open, applied for it, and been here about three and a half years now. Nice, nice. Well, it's an interesting time to be here, especially in your position. And, and I know you and I met uh, for the first time um, right at the beginning of this pandemic right. and, uh, up in the sub. So kind of tell us a little bit um, about your responsibility as a safety manager with, with COVID-19 and, and everything you've been doing sure. since March. Well, as you know, <laughs> we've, we've been going a long time. Um, for preparation, development of safety plans, COVID safe practices. So on the day you were talking about, we, we activated what we call the Emergency Operations Center, and that's an emergency management term, um, and coordinated the creation of the incident management team uh, using national standards for, for how we manage emergencies. So we had a lot of people that were voluntold and we had a lot of people that volunteered. I think our team is up to almost 40 members. Uh, each person has a specific role um, and they facilitate the needs for that role. So I was kind of voluntold to be the emergency operations director, uh, as you know. And, you know, we've been, it's been a challenge for us. And the, the biggest thing I can say it's been a challenge is because we don't, have professional emergency managers, if that makes sense, or professional emergency response personnel. So as you know, we had to train everybody from ground up on how we actually deal with emergencies. And I couldn't be more proud than the way that um, those team members have really put the safety and, and health of this university at the as a top priority. So it's been really, I've worked with a lot of management teams, incident management teams, and I put this one up there with with the best of them, because it's just the dedications there, the commitment. You know, we've been tired, as you know. <laughs> we've been going a long time. Um, we were counting the days. I think we quit counting. I think we're up. We'll have the longest activation of the Emergency Operations Center in history. Um, I think we activated before the state did. So we may be, for COVID-19, the longest activated Emergency Operations Center in the state. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know that, you know, we meet often and, um, kind of talk about, you know, that, that uh, our command center, if you will, and, and, and the meetings and how, how they started and how we've evolved sure. and, and, you know, what are, what are some of the highlights that we've kind of um, achieved, you know, since all this has started? Well, I think the biggest highlights is our ability to interpret the public health orders, which sometimes are confusing, as you know maybe not straightforward and maybe a little subjective, but we're able to look at those orders and we develop plans, uh, objectives, our approach is based on that. The other thing that we did, I think really well, I think a lot of people are looking at us as the gold star institution across the state, whatever, if it's universities or state agencies. We developed an exposure safety plan, which was an OSHA requirement um, that identified mitigation, 
prevention, protection measures all related to COVID. Um, and OSHA required that we did that. I don't think a lot of entities did that. So I'm really proud of that. And then the other thing that kind of spun off the exposure plans is we needed to train people. So OSHA says if, if it's not written down, if you don't train people, it doesn't exist. And so right now we've offered, or currently are offering 10 COVID related trainings. We have almost a thousand participants. And when you think about that, it doesn't seem like a whole lot, but we only have about 400 people on campus. So we have people taking multiple classes or, um, and they're all online self-paced, but I think that's really helped the university as a whole understand um, protection measures, understand the challenges we have as a team um, to make sure people are, are safe, make sure they're, they're healthy. And you know, and then the incident management team, as you mentioned, we're, we were meeting every day. And as the summer started, we were preparing for the fall, right, as you know. And that took a lot of effort. I remember you were you're in there, in there with us, sun up to sundown. We were working hard, putting plans together. I think we had a total of almost 30 safety-related plans that are in writing right now. So, those have been some of the accomplishments. And I think overall, going back to the to me, the biggest accomplishment is what the team's done. Those 34, almost 40 members you know, with the commitment they've given besides the other jobs we have to do, uh, it truly shows the commitment that they have to this university. Well, I know I can really attest to that and, and really enjoyed working with with this group of people. And, you know, for me, get arriving in January and then uh, this starting in March, you know, a lot of the people on this, on this committee and this group, you know, I, I probably, it would have been a while before we met. And so, we have really built a, a, a closer community, uh, in my opinion, be, because of COVID. And so taking the taking the positives of COVID, um, which is hard to find sometimes, right. uh, this has been a positive um, experience for me to, to be able to work with the group that we are. And, and we, we, you know, everyone is very considerate of each other and, and each department. But, you know, you're saying kind of the, the gold standard here. I, you know, last week, uh, as you know, I met with the, the governor's office along with some of our administrators, President Minner, uh, to go over the athletic piece. And we have, a, you know, now another document <laughs> right. that that we have um, when it comes to athletics. And, and, and this was focused on cross country and, and the meet, uh, the RMAC championships. Uh, but the feedback we received during that meeting was Highlands has done a really, really good job of managing this and, and 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 doing everything possible to keep the campus safe, the community safe, and the and the state safe. So, and that really uh, contributes to what you've done in leading this this group. So I thank you um, thank for you. for everything that you've done. And I right back at you. I mean, I, I you've done an amazing job with a very difficult and challenging situation we're in. You know, we're trying to put people back on the field. It's difficult, right? And you've just done an amazing job. We're, we're glad you're part of our team. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Well, let, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about your experience here at Savannah Highlands. And, and kind of, I guess, one, you know, tell us a little bit about your time here, and then two, how to, how to prepare you for the position you're in now. Absolutely. So I'm looking at the field. It was a lot different. <laughs> we had grass field and a lot of dirt, and our track was cinder. I, I don't even know how you explain it. It was gravel. Um, you know, I came from Hobbs. That's where I graduated from. And, you know, I'll tell a little story that when I came up here on my recruiting trip, Hobbs had the biggest high school stadium in, in New Mexico by far. If you take out, you know, where Cruces High and Mayfield would play at Aggie Memorial, but our high school stadium was about 13,000 people. So we drove up. I was with another buddy from Hobbs. We were up here. And we came to the stadium and I said, well, there's no way this is a college stadium, right? And so some town member, I asked him, I said, where's the Highlands football stadium? He sent us to some rodeo fairgrounds up in the canyon. So we figured <laughs> we were at the right location. <laughs> so uh, there was a transition, right? For all of us that came in, we, Coach Ewan was our head coach. Um, coach Steve Casey was from Virginia Tech, played quarterback there with Bruce Smith, just really, really, you know, great coaches. They brought in a lot of Arizona um, 
because they were all Arizona JC or community college coaches. They brought in a lot of very good players from Arizona and they recruited heavily in New Mexico, which I really appreciated because these stands were full. You know, they were the community was supporting kids that they'd heard of or that they'd watched throughout their high school career. Um, we had some really good years, really strong. As a matter of fact, we were talking about the, the HU um, honor, the Hall of Fame. Three members this year that are inducted played with me on those teams. Uh, Jermaine Whitaker was our All-American quarterback. Brad Campbell was the safety. And then Russ Bailey could catch anything that was ever thrown. It was just amazing. So we built, as in any you know athletic program, we, we had a really strong bond with the football players. And I think that transition, what I talked about earlier, a lot of us went and fought fire together. Um, in the summertime, which even developed that bond stronger. You know, you truly are relying on your brother to watch your back. Um, so those, what we learned on this field, you know, the blood, sweat, and tears really developed that foundation for, for me personally dealing with, um, you know, devastating fires that cost many firefighters' lives, um, the investigations of those, you know, how do you deal with that mentally? And those were all things that really were instilled by my father as a football coach, but, you know, really came to light on this field here, you know, really strengthened us to, to be strong. And I know those players I played with, they're, they're such successful men. They're, they're, they're great parents, great dads, um, very important in their communities. And, and they would all attribute to what we did here, you know, as building that foundation. So, and I think that's, I just had a conversation with two with Jermaine Whitaker and my buddy Jim O'Leary played a linebacker for us and it's we hadn't seen each other in five six years but it's like we never never missed a beat you know so we stay in contact quite a few of us then we had a, quite a few players that are now in the coaching ranks in New Mexico and you know so we stay in contact with them through those avenues.